Ting Fang, thanks for taking the time to catch up with me here at MWC. I want to talk about some of the foundation research that you and your team are doing. Let's maybe start with this move from 5G to 5G Advance. What are some of the big open items that you all are looking at? That's a great question. Actually, 5G Advanced has uh, two components. One component is on the foundational research that's actually going to bring some new air interface um, uh, innovation. And another part of 5G Advanced is to enable new services. So in my mind, 5G Advanced is not monolithic. Um, on the part of foundational research, it's, um, for example, it's almost like uh, a pre-6G study. Uh, some of the items include uh, full duplex and uh, ML-based air interface. So some part of it will be realized in 5G Advanced in the next five years. And uh, some part of it will actually be commercialized in 6G. So the other part of 5G Advanced, on the other hand, is enabling new services. So those include some more advanced like uh, positioning, solutions, um, new silent solutions. Uh, so there are many other new use cases we are looking at that uh, can make 5G advanced, or some people call it 5.5G, um, make that um, innovation, make that uh, um, next version of 5G more appealing for uh, both operators and end users. So you referenced ML in the air interface and the innovation happening there. Can you expand a little bit on exactly what that kind of implies for the trajectory of 5G Advance and the way these networks are built and operated? Yeah, so there are two components in the ML. One component of ML is actually using the machine learning on the network side uh, in the radio area network to make it more efficient, more optimized. Another aspect of ML was to look at how we can use ML in the air interface itself, which means instead of have a predefined spec, the design of the air interface will be driven by data. So the air interface will adapt to the particular condition that's operating it between the UE and the Genobi, or mobile and the network, and uh, this is adaptive air interface that uh, we're looking into. Okay, and then I also wanted to hear from you a little bit about the new spectrum that we hope comes aligned for cellular use, uh, particularly the upper mid-band, the 7 to 16 gigahertz range. Tell me a little bit about how you're thinking of applying some of the concepts of massive MIMO forward as we go up into that upper mid-band. Yeah, so the, uh, this is a super exciting topic we're working on. Once you go to higher frequency, you actually need more beamforming gain to offset the propagation loss, like between 7 and 16 gigahertz. There you can, have, you can imagine your channel bandwidth can be a lot higher. Instead of 100 megahertz carriers, you can have 200 megahertz, 400 megahertz, 800 megahertz, those type of uh, carrier bandwidth. And, but at the same time, you need to offset the propagation loss, so the number of antenna elements will go exceed 1,000 elements. We call it the gigamimo. So one of the prototypes we're building has 4K elements in a single panel, which is of the same size as the C-band massive MIMO array, but it has much higher array gain. And that should be able to allow us to offset the propagation loss at higher frequency and giving us even more dimensions because of the digital beam multiplexing type of um, a capacity increasing approach. Well, I always enjoy talking to you and getting your view on where all this technology is going. So thank you, Ting Feng. Thank you very much.